If, God forbid, you've ever been a frequent user of Tumblr, you've probably seen this user before. Sixpence, also known as Sixpence is an extremely popular Tumblr blogger who posts horror-related content. Creepy facts, real-life horror, spooky gift sets, movie lists, creepypastas, etc. Bite-sized horror content, especially on a site like Tumblr, is very popular. I mean, just look at all the creepy fact accounts on Instagram. Abandoned mall taken over by fish. Okay. The point is, Sixpence is popular, probably one of the most popular users on the site. On a website like Tumblr where you can't see follow accounts and it's more about individual content than creating any kind of persona, Sixpence is one of the few users in the Hall of Fame who has achieved notoriety or infamy. So why are we talking about her? Her content is a little creepy, a little ghastly and ghoulish, a little ooky spooky, but there's nothing wrong with that. Well it turns out that Sixpence is not only a horror blogger, but a hack therapist, an ableist, and Oh yeah, her family owns a literal child slave. Here's the story of Tumblr user Sixpence. Before we get on with today's video, I'd like to briefly mention that this video is sponsored by Wingfox. Wingfox is an amazing platform where you can take courses in art, painting, 3D modeling, graphic design, film production, animation, and more, all taught by professionals, industry experts, and veterans. There are over 80 different courses spanning all kinds of mediums, and all of them are super accessible and affordable. The course that I took was character design and animation elements taught by former Disney animation veteran James Barabkinik. He's worked on legendary productions like Mulan, The Fox and the Hound, Pinocchio, Snow White, Casper, and more. Keep in mind this dude is a golden era Disney veteran, so you're really learning from the best. James is a fantastic teacher, and you'll learn everything from character design to drawing hands to animation and literally everything in between. There's something for everyone on Wing Fox, whether you're an expert looking to level up your skills or a hobbyist looking to learn something new. All of the courses are incredibly affordable, and once you buy a course, all of the materials and the course itself are yours to keep forever. Head to Wing Fox com and enter my code ZZZ10 at checkout to get $10 off any course from their huge range. If you want to check out the course that I took, Character Design and Animation Elements, there's an affiliate link in the description. Once again, that's code ZZZ10 at checkout for $10 off. Thank you so much to Wingfox for sponsoring this video, and now let's continue with the story of Sixpence. The blog's self-described specialty is creepy, bizarre, horror, paranormal, and science. We got a bunch of links up here, creepy, paranormal, Halloween, scary stories, but B bizarre world. Was that last one just linked back to the Tumblr homepage? The blog may seem harmless, but in reality, it's filled with stolen content and offensive and ignorant rhetoric. A lot of the time, Sixpence will simply repost things from r slash oddly satisfying or r slash no sleep with no credit or will link to a site that's just another repost of the original. Insert repostception joke from 2013 here. It's not just one or two posts either, a huge chunk of her content is just stolen and uncredited work. Even the description are copy pasted. I mean, to be fair, it's probably because the blog averages about 10 posts a day, so they're too lazy to make original content or properly credit their sources, but damn if that's not a commitment to putting out terrible quality content. A lot of her posts are also just bad. It could be considered in poor taste too, as someone working towards a degree in health tell people that antidepressants suck at working and instead propose that you need to hardwire your brain instead. And as someone with OCD, I think it's in very poor taste to post a story where someone with crippling OCD commits suicide by shooting themselves and end up shooting out the OCD and making a full recovery. The blog has multiple posts going, ooh, look at the spooky drawing made by someone with schizophrenia, isn't this a scary drawing? Similarly the majority of the creepypastas she posts are just this guy is a serial killer but it turns out he was a serial killer because he had schizophrenia so um yeah pretty scary huh like this short story she posted which is absolutely hilarious simply because of the line I left to invite my schizophrenic mum to dinner. Like is that her mum's name in her phone? Also the story ends with the mum drowning the author's child in a bathtub for no reason. So I don't really understand the point of the story other than mentally ill bad 
please upvote. For the uninformed, these stories, while they may seem like a bit of harmless fun, reinforce the idea that people with schizophrenia, psychosis, and other mental disorders are evil, violent people likely to become serial killers. This is not at all true, and while those who suffer with these illnesses do struggle with scary and awful symptoms, with the help of medication, therapy, and support, they generally just live normal, everyday lives like any other person. Stories and posts like these only further stereotype and villainize the mentally ill who are already alienated by the mainstream media. I mean, she talks about mental illness as if it's the 1700s and she's about to prescribe me a lobotomy because I got a bit too excited about politics. Speaking of the incredibly offensive and distasteful way she talks about mental illness, did you know she started a program where for 30 whole dollars she'd be your therapist for a month? I'm not joking. Sixpence Heels was an initiative launched by the blogger where for $30 should be your hacksaw therapist for a month. Simply send an email, fill out her little Google questionnaire with all your quote major and minor doubts, and you get one whole email. Obviously this is hilariously awful and as almost everyone stated, Sixpence was not qualified to provide this service. Therapists are usually specialists in just a few areas, they have years of qualified training in cognitive behavioural therapy and medicine, and have their own support systems in place to look after their own mental health. Sixpence on the other hand was a college student who ran a Tumblr blog. It would be different if the service was free and she was just telling her followers that they could vent to her or reach out for support, but charging $30 for mental health services which you aren't qualified in the slightest to provide is incredibly wrong. In her apology post, Sixpence claimed that she just wanted to help people, and I believe that to an extent, but by charging $30 for the service, she was aiming to profit off the desperation of her followers who couldn't afford proper therapy. It was greedy, it was manipulative, and it was essentially a scam, but at the cost of the literal severe mental illnesses of the followers that trusted her. Also, from what I've read, it's pretty illegal to offer any kind of paid counselling service without the appropriate qualifications, and while Sixpence did state that the program wasn't a substitute for therapy, the whole thing was on extremely thin legal ice. Legal ice? What am I even saying? <laughs> To be fair, the scheme never fully went ahead because of the huge amount of backlash and Sixpence made an extremely brief apology post linking to some mental health resources, which is what she should have done in the first place if she wanted to help out so badly. So now you're thinking, wow, this blogger, after villainizing all these mental illnesses, tried to then turn around and con her vulnerable followers out of money for a fake therapy scam. This story can't get any worse. If you've been on my channel, you know, it always gets worse. Yeah, you read that title right, believe it or not. This mess started when a Tumblr user sent sixpence an ask saying, Did you ever post about the children that worked at your family's home? When you were away, maybe I missed the post. Sixpence replies in part, In South Asian countries what happens is that poorer families usually lend their child to richer families once the child has reached a certain age such as 12 or 13. The child does basic housework such as make the bed, do some cooking, dust furniture, and sweep the floors. In return, the poorer families get paid. The child is free to leave at any time and can visit their family whenever they want to. I talked to the girl that worked in my uncle's house. Her name was Priya and she was the sweetest little thing. When I asked her about how she felt working at my uncle's house, she was to my surprise very ecstatic about it. She enjoyed working there as she had enough to eat every day and enjoyed places such as AC, indoor plumbing and much more. She said it beats working in a factory where many children are injured daily and work in poor conditions. If you're wondering about education and why she isn't in school, after grade 5 education isn't free anymore, it costs a lot of money and families don't have that. Now this sparks somewhat of a debate, so yeah, Tumblr users were actually arguing over whether child slavery is okay. But I mean it's Tumblr, so you can probably believe that. And while you may be tempted to say, it's another culture, unfortunately it's just normalized over there, that doesn't make it acceptable or justifiable in any way. It's also interesting to note that Sixpence states that children are usually picked as child laborers around 12 to 13 and their after grade 5 education stops being free, so why does her family have an 8 year old? If education is free until around age 10, why do they have an 8 year old child slave? A Tumblr user replied to one of Sixpence's posts about the child basically saying that it was unacceptable in every way. And oh boy, Sixpence kind of blew up. Do you have any reading comprehension skills? 
I came to this country for a vacation to visit my family and I am witnessing these acts. I do not condone child labor. I did not hire this child to work for me. Me personally, I didn't do this. Honestly, this is why people don't like Tumblr anymore, because some users take people's thoughts and actions no matter how much of a good intention they may have and they make it seem as if it's the most offensive, grossest thing they have ever seen. You guys need to calm down and think things through before you go around throwing out words about how repulsed you are at something you clearly didn't understand the meaning behind. So true, Sixpence. I mean, I'm not an expert on child slavery, so I really can't judge. You seem like the expert, though. How about you enlighten us? She took such an aggressive, defensive stance for someone who was literally being accused of owning a child slave, so I just, I don't know what she was thinking. This made her look 2,000 times worse. She's angry, she's rude, and most importantly, she's clearly defending the actions of her family. In my opinion, Sixpence had normalized it so much in her own life that she was shocked and hurt when other people pointed out that it wasn't normal or okay in any sense of the word, which it still is and Sixpence needs to own up to being complicit in the use of children as underpaid, overworked, and human laborers. It may not have been her that hired the child, but by standing by, doing nothing, and continuing to defend her family, she's being a bystander to an awful, abusive trade. Hilariously, she also started a t-shirt campaign to bring awareness to child trafficking, which is just... The lack of self-awareness. After all of this, Sixpence stopped responding to the drama and it mostly died down with a large majority of her followers remaining unaware of the scandal. However, there are still many people who remember this fiasco and the phrase Tumblr user Sixpence owns a child slave has become somewhat of a catchphrase to reference all of the insane and bizarre dramas that happened on Tumblr in the early days. So that's the story of Sixpence. A terrible blog and a terrible person. <laughs> now I don't think that Sixpence is evil and I understand that it's hard to control things that your family do but she's clearly defending them and being complicit in child labor which is wrong in every sense. She still has a large following on Tumblr with her posts getting thousands of notes and I guess I just kind of wanted to bring awareness to it considering you know, that. As far as I know, Sixpence and her family still own child laborers because I haven't seen any updates on the situation and I'm pretty sure it was basically swept under the rug entirely. As with all my videos, I don't want people to send hate or witch hunt Sixpence. My videos are always made to be entertaining and informative and not a rally to harass anyone. Since Sixpence couldn't do it, I'm going to be donating to Polaris. Polaris is a really great charity working to fight human trafficking across the globe. It has a ton of wonderful articles and resources on the topic and it has a guide star platinum seal of transparency so you know it's trustworthy. I'm going to be donating and I encourage you to donate as well, even a small amount helps. Thank you guys so much for coming along on this wild ride with me and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Also since... Since... Also six since we, also six since, oh my god.